Was Adam the first man created by God or was there someone else? Well, that's what we're going to look at in today's Bible study video. So let's get started. So it's actually interesting because a couple of days ago, um, my wife got a, t a message from one of her good friends and basically was asking a question saying, look, one of her friends sent me this message talking about how Adam wasn't the first man created by God because of what it says in Genesis 1 verse 26 where it says and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and then they went on to talk about chapter 2 verse 7 where it says and the Lord God formed man the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living so on and so forth and her friend basically asked her and said look do you have any scriptures or any references you want to bring up to basically break it down now my wife told me about the incident and i basically felt led at the time and said you know what one scripture came to our mind i'll post it up on screen right now for a little bit of context but i basically just began to write a short message just literally breaking down what a lot of people mistakenly think when they read through genesis 1 and 2 and as always my goal to you is to don't just take what i say from what i'm reading from the scriptures read the scriptures for yourself study these things out for yourself and see whether or not these things are actually true okay so i'm going to paraphrase and work actually quite quickly just for sake of time okay so genesis 1 is actually pretty self-explanatory in fact i've actually been reading through genesis 1 recently with my daughter five years old okay and we're going day one day two day three day four day five okay day six so genesis chapter one is pretty much covering the first six days of creation okay so where um the person who was texting my wife's friend was asking about how does these two texts line how does these two texts line up based on genesis 1 talking about god making man here and the genesis 2 talking about god making man here well it's actually quite it's quite simple and one of the things i said in, in the message i wrote was look if you read genesis 1 and 2 um together okay pretty much how you're supposed to read it in my opinion carefully you'll see the details which make it ever so clear that God is talking about the same person, the same man, Adam, in both scenarios. So let's look what it says, okay? So if you read down after God's talking about God creating man and all that kind of stuff, the first six days of creation, chapter one, look what it says to start chapter two, which is really important. It says, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. So that was the six days covered in the previous chapter. Now look what it says, verse two, and on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. Now, I don't want to get into a whole other study about this. God wasn't getting tired here or anything like that. The scripture basically just means God stopped working, okay? The scripture says in another place that the Lord doesn't sleep or slumber, just to give you some more context into what we're talking about here, but I don't want to get into that in loads of detail in this video. So look what it says, verse 3. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Then look, this is the key verse here, and you see this all over the scriptures. And what will happen is you either get a bird's eye view from far out, or you'll get a close-up, or you'll get loads of detail. Now look really carefully as we read through this, how it's clear, just by reading what the scripture says, that it's actually a close-up. So look what it says. Verse 4. These the generations of the heavens and of the earth, when? when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, okay? So these are the generations. You see this um, so many times. Genesis 5 is a good example, okay? goes for um, um, generations from Adam all the way to Noah and his sons, okay? Um, and in and around that, you have sort of like the, the, the snap, the detail about what's going on in the close-up, okay? Um, Genesis 10 and 11, okay? You get a bird's eye view in Genesis 10 of the lineage then in genesis 11 you get some context into some of the the the, the key characters genesis 10 and what they were doing and the tower of babel and all that kind of stuff go back and watch our genesis videos if you want more context but these are the generations is saying this is the history of what of the heavens and the earth when when they were created in the day that the lord god made the earth and the heavens so when did god create this okay God created this in chapter 1. That's what we read about. So that's the first thing. Now look what it says. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. Why? For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and not a man to till the ground. So what is that saying here? They're saying that we've got all of these plants and this um, vegetation, basically, but the Lord hasn't caused it to rain on the ground because there wasn't a man to till the ground okay so at this present time what we're reading in regards to the history we have vegetation 
which you covered in Genesis 1 anyway, okay, go back and study it, but there's no man yet, okay? So that lines up with the timeline, the chronology, chronological order of Genesis 1 anyway, but let's keep reading. We know at this point there's still no man. Look what it says. But there went up a mist, a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man, the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So if you just go back through Genesis 1, you'll see the layout, okay? God created the lights, God created the vegetation, God created the dry area to appear, God created the animals, God created all these different things, and then God created the man, okay, to have dominion. And it says, be fruitful and multiply and subdue the earth and replenish it and etc. Okay, this is the same timeline, but now we're getting specific detail from the bird, from a close up of what the man was actually doing and how he was actually constructed. And look what it says, okay. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Why are we hearing about this garden? We've just heard about all of this creation. Why are we now hearing about a garden? Why? Because it's specific to this, the story, the narrative of the man, okay? God gave us the bird's eye view. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, okay? This piece of text now that we've covered from chapter two covers the seventh day, and now we deep dive into the close-up from the perspective of a man, okay? Look what it says next. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay? So one thing you need to you need to focus on before I even say the next thing I'm going to say, and this is really important here, okay? I've said it already. This whole thing is a close-up from man's perspective. You know what I'm mean? saying? Okay, why is God creating these things if God created them in chapter one and all this kind of stuff? Look what it said, okay? The tree of life also in the midst of where? The garden, okay? And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, this is really interesting because I was listening to a, a teaching recently and it, it was talking about how when you look at Genesis 1, okay? I've already alluded to it already. This happened on day 1, this happened on day 2, this happened on day 3, day 4, day 5, okay? Day 6, God created man, okay? God, man didn't see God create anything, okay? Up until this point where God put the man, created the man, put him in the garden, and then started creating this stuff, okay, in the garden, okay? So it's, it's sort, of, sort of like a miniature creation, okay, if you would have it, okay, because we've got trees, we've got the vegetation, we've got animals. And why does he do this? Look what it says. And a river went out of Eden, okay, to water the garden, okay? So all about the garden sent around the man. And it goes down, and it talks about the rivers between 11... 12, 13, 14, and then it goes back, which is a bit of more interest to us now. 15, and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayst freely eat. So now God's given not only his vocation, which is take care of the garden, he also has given him his commandments. You can eat of all of these trees except for the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay, look what it says. 17, but, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So the commandment, a warning, and obviously um, advice, okay? Um, a piece of advice for his health and his well-being, that if he eats this, this he's going to die. And look what he says next. 18, and the Lord God said, not good that the man should be alone, I will make him and help me for him. Okay, so created the man, now let me create the woman. You will never get this sort of context just from reading Genesis 1 where it says God created man, he created, in it, he created them in the image of God, created he them, male and female, created he them, okay? Um, you will never get the detail in the context of what's that, how God actually did it without Genesis 2. So look what he says next, okay? So he's going to create a help me for him. Verse 19. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature that the name thereof. So this lines up. Why? One, I've already mentioned it. The first thing we talked about is that now Adam was actually seeing God create. Okay? Create stuff for himself. The second thing is this lines up with the commandment. Be fruitful, multiply, have dominion over the earth, replenish it, etc. God brings the animals to... to to Adam, Adam names them. Okay, he takes dominion, he takes authority over the animals over the earth. Okay, not only that, what does it do? Animals are coming to Adam, male and female. These animals here, there's male and there's female. Okay, all of these animals ha have a, a mate, 
Where's my mate? I don't have a mate, okay? Even though God had already said, it's not good that man should be alone, I'll create help for me for him. He made it ever so clear to Adam that, look, these animals have partners and they have companionship. In that way, it's helping Adam to realize and say, okay, you know what, I need companionship. And look what it says. 20, and Adam gave names to all cattle and to, to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help me for him. 21, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Okay, and it goes on throughout the chapter, Let's wrap up that piece of text but when you put this all together it makes it ever so clear okay going back to genesis 1 which is sort of like the bird's eye view god created this and that and this and that and it was good and it was good and so that it was good etc then we get the the close-up of god's greatest creation man okay and woman that came out of man and why he created man and where he put man and that man was able to see creation so when you look at this stuff all together okay just reading it carefully and concisely in one sitting, you can easily see how Adam was the first man created by God. It's just that simple, okay? So on that note, I want to thank you for watching today's video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and obviously leave your comments below with your thoughts and your scriptures that you think help answer this question in your eyes and look out for the next video um, related to our Bible studies. Thanks and take care.